October 6, 1977. 9.25 a.m. Fair 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Thursday. Dear Joy, Bow and Boys. We returned yesterday noon from our trip around Lake Superior, and it was a wonderful week. Uncle Si arrived here Wednesday p.m., September 28th, and next morning we took flowers to Aunt Anna's grave and also to Mrs. Brigham's in another cemetery in Battle Creek. Then we ate lunch at Bill Knapp's and returned home by 3 p.m. We were on our way north. It had been rather cloudy and damp and was cloudy all p.m., but after that we had beautiful clear skies, which made the Great Lakes look as blue as sapphires. We stayed below the Straits Thursday night and the next night above Wawa and the next night on Thunder Bay. The aspens and birch were shades of gold, and the many evergreens on the mountains, along with the golden shades, made a delightful picture in contrast to the blue waters of Lake Superior. We took a lot of movies and pictures. We had wondered if we could get through on the roads on Thunder Bay, as it had been reported all over that highways and some bridges were washed out by the deluge of rain a week or so before. So, we weren't surprised to see many areas where the creeks and rivers had rushed down the mountainside, or under and over the roads causing much damage and cleanup and repairs. On Sunday, the road crews were still busy at their jobs, but we got through all okay. Roadsides were a mess of debris in many places. Trees, rocks, branches, or mud had been high on the brush and bridges. We got movies of the Roaring River, and falls at Cross River where the falls are above the bridge and it roars underneath and into a gorge below. At noon Sunday, Dad stopped at a Kentucky fried chicken place and got everything for a nice dinner, and the day was so nice we ate a picnic at a lovely rest area where waves of Thunder Bay lapped the pebbly shore and many rock hounds hunted for gemstones. After our dinner, I even went down to the shore and looked for stones. The area had Thompsonite, Amethyst, and Agates. I saw a lovely little round jade stone, too, one lady had just found. I'd like to have stayed much longer, but we had to go. We went through Duluth, Minnesota, and soon across a part of Wisconsin. Much of the time we were in mountainous country and in sight of the lakes. There was a different lake for each turn, I guess. We had good roads and nice camping sites and rest areas, and we all had a fine time, and Uncle George got around very well, real well. Uncle George got around real well. As we got back along the south shore of Lake Superior, we began to see more colors in the leaves. We stopped at Agate Falls and walked quite away so we could see the falls. Dad went on and got movies from away downstream up towards the falls. Monday night we stayed ten miles north of St. Agnes and the weather was still nice, but we saw frost for the first time on Tuesday morning. We got up a little earlier Tuesday so as to catch the 9.20 a.m. boat to Mackinac Island. We didn't think there'd be many people on the tour, but instead the boat was loaded. A busload of high school kids from Martin, Michigan, and their sponsors were on our boat. Bob Johnson's wife and our substitute mail carrier, a young lady and her husband we knew, and Mel Shook's daughter, etc. So, we had fun. We took the ride around the island in a surrey drawn by a team of big sorrel draft horses. We walked around and took pictures of lots of the historic things at the fort. My only gripe was I didn't get to walk along the porch or promenade at Grand Hotel, but we got movies from the boat. It was really a fine trip. Uncle Si had always wanted to go to Mackinac Island, and Dad and I hadn't been there, so we all had a fine time. We returned to St. Agnes about 3 p.m., and I fixed dinner. Then we started down the trail home by way of Indian River. We stopped at the Catholic Shrine, the world's largest crucifix at Indian River, so Uncle Si could pray and get movies, etc., and then on down to a fine rest area for the night. Then we got to bed early, and by morning we heard rain, and we drove most of the way on home in rain or mist. It had rained quite a lot while we were gone, and we hear that the potato growers are having bad trouble getting their potatoes harvested, and potatoes are rotting in the ground. What a pity with all the costs of growing. Oh yes, Delton, 
High school homecoming game was grand, 13 to 0 for Delton, but the day was miserable and cold and Jody about froze. I phoned Aunt Glenna last evening to hear how Janet Marie came through her foot and leg surgery. I guess it wasn't very pleasant, and Janet cried all the night after the surgery a week ago Wednesday. She has a cast on her leg from above the knee over the tips of her toes on the right foot. She came home on Friday, I think. She may need more surgery later. Uncle Isaac and Aunt Dora are having their problems. Twice while we were gone, Aunt Dora had to go to the hospital in Kalamazoo. She has trouble with her heart missing beats, and then she began to feel numb and couldn't swallow. I guess they feared a stroke. I talked to Aunt Glenna this a.m., and she said she just talked to Aunt Dora, and she seemed to be feeling some better this a.m. The church work worries both Isaac and Dora, and it's too bad. Isaac has to pastor now when they aren't at all well. While we were gone, it got cold here, and forecasts for frost, so Junior, Marilyn, and the girls brought all of my plants inside, and when we got home, there were three wagon loads of plants and plants all over inside in small wagons. So yesterday p.m., I got things in place and cleaned up, and now the dining room looks like a greenhouse. I gave Connie and Margaret some plants and hope Dorlene doesn't mind too much. They were thrilled. Today is WMA at Linda Leonard's by the south of the church, and I haven't any way to go. Marilyn went to Grand Rapids very early. I don't know for what. Dad had to take the pickup to Martin for some repairs and bottled gas for his trip Saturday out to Colorado. Also, Uncle Cy had to get his tires balanced so he couldn't take me, so here I am. We have a fire in the fireplace, and it feels good. I must do laundry this p.m. and get everything ready today and tomorrow for Dad, like a clean trailer, etc. Last Sunday was our homecoming at the church, and we missed that. Uncle Silas wanted to head for Aunt Julia's Saturday as soon as Dad left, but we phoned Julia, and she's babysitting all this weekend, so we're not going to see her until next Monday and come home on Wednesday. Irene Johncock will go with us. After Uncle Silas goes on to Lansing, etc., I'll spend some time with Aunt Glenna, I hope. We hope you are all feeling well and it's not too hot now. Give each other some extra loving for us. Jerry and Dorlene went to a Grand Valley State University JV game where Phil got to play two quarters, and he did real well. His roommate Ralph Ryan got his knee injured badly and requires surgery so he can't play anymore this year. Jack spent last weekend at Aunt Glenna's, and they all went to homecoming at church, and they enjoyed Jack.